Hi, I'm Mark Lassoff from LearnToProgram.tv. Let's get started on our MP3 player in Flash Professional CS5. I happen to be using a Mac, but this will work equally well on a PC. Doesn't matter. We're going to start by creating a new file. We're going to create a new ActionScript 3.0 file. ActionScript 2.0 isn't really used very much for new files, but you'll see some older files that still have the uh, ActionScript 2 version. We're going to use ActionScript 3 so we can be current and take full advantage of all of the sound objects that are available with an ActionScript. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size of this to something that's a little more appropriate for an MP3 player. So 550 by 400, a little much. I could go with maybe 500 by 300 kind of give us a better size for the mp3 player. I don't care about background color. And for those of you who've used Flash for animation, I also don't care about the frame rate. The reason I don't care about the frame rate is that we're only going to use one frame. And if you haven't used uh, ActionScript before, then you might be surprised did that the wrong way. We want 300 by 500. Wasn't paying attention. Um, anyway, if you are just starting with ActionScript, you may be surprised that we just use one frame. And that's because we're not really doing any animation here. We're more focused on um, the programmatic aspects and using the ActionScript code. All right, so there's our MP3 player, 300 by 500. That may even be too tall. You know what? I'm going to make that uh, not quite as high. Let's go with just 300 by 400. Decisions, decisions. Perfect. Okay, now I'm not going to make it fancy or look real good. I'll leave that up to the graphic artists out there. Our object is to learn the programming, and in this first video, we're simply going to get a sound to play. Now, I've already got an a MP3 ready, and let's go ahead and save this in the same file as the MP3, just for ease. So, uh, let's go ahead and find our file menu. And there we go, and did file and save. And let's go ahead and let's just call this MP3 player. Okay, the next step is we're going to use the components panel here. And under user interface, we've got a number of components. Components are pre-built little movies or actions that um, have some purpose in the, for the user. So we've got a button, a checkbox, a color picker. A lot of these probably look real familiar. We're just going to use a button, and it's going to become our play button. And in Flash CS5, it provides the component parameters right here as part of the property stack. Now, by the way, if your screen looks different than mine, you can go up here and choose Developer for the Developer Layout. You may be an animator or designer layout, but Developer Layout is kind of optimized for exactly what uh, developers or programmers do. Pop up that action screen. So let's change the label here to Play. Now, the other important thing we have to do, besides giving that a label that makes sense, it now says play on it, is an instance name. Instance names are the names that we'll use to address this particular object through ActionScript. So I'm going to call this BTN play. I like to prepend the object or property names that I'm using with the type of object they are. This way, if I'm only looking at the ActionScript, I know, oh, hey, that's a button. So BTN play. That's what we're going to call it. So when the user clicks BTN play, it's going to play the music. So now that we've done that, we've got to address BTN play through ActionScript. And there's a couple of different parts to doing that. So let's open up our Actions window. And there it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to put on the button called BTN play. So we're going to address the button BTN play. So it knows this little piece of action script that I'm writing is for that button. And I'm going to use a method called add event listener. Notice it turned blue because it's a recognized method. A method is a verb in action script. It causes something to happen. An event listener is simply a listener that's on that button that's waiting for something to happen. It's waiting for the user to do something to that button. Now in this case, what we're waiting to happen for that button is a mouse event. And that particular mouse event is click. So we're saying, okay, sit here and wait for that button to be clicked. Wait, wait, wait. Now, when it's clicked, we're going to run a function called play music. Now, that didn't turn blue because we haven't written that function yet. The play music function is going to be a function we write. So let's test this a little bit at a time. Let's go ahead and write the, the play music function. 
So we have our listener here. It's waiting. And it's, okay, the mouse event has happened. It's been clicked. We're going to run a function called play music. So we'll create the function, function play music. That's the name of it. Notice the name is the same as the second parameter of the add event listener, because that's how we have to address it. So it says, okay, run play music. Here's play music. Now, we're going to have the play music past an event, and in this case, it's going to be a mouse event. Now, this is something, I wouldn't worry too much about this at this point, but essentially this is being passed to this function. We're not going to be using it, but we have to have it passed to any function that's called by a listener. We have to have it receive the event. Now, this function doesn't return anything, so it's a void function. And what I mean by return, if you're new to programming, is the function doesn't provide a value back to the caller. Okay, you'll also notice on line one, it's automatically added this import, import flash events, mouse event. And what that's doing is that's importing a bunch of pre-written action script that we can use to deal with this particular mouse event, the mouse event dot click. That's defined inside this class, which has already been written for us. So we don't have to deal with it, but the import is provided. So, okay, so the button has the listener. The listener is going to call play music when the button is clicked. And now the function play music which receives the mouse event as a parameter and returns nothing. Now we've got to define, okay, what happens? Well, we've got to define some objects here. So we've got to define a sound object, and we'll simply call it my music. So we use var. Var means I'm declaring a variable or a reference. We're calling the reference my music, and it's of the type sound equals new sound. Okay, this is known as instantiation. It's a complex word. Instantiation. I think I can even spell it correctly. What we're creating here is a reference called My Music. And that's a reference to a sound object. Just like other objects can have types or variables can have types, you may have heard of integer variables, you may have heard of double variables or Boolean variables. So this is a sound variable, or more truly, a reference. When we say equals new sound, we're instantiating that reference, and it now has all of the powers of a sound object. You can look up the sound object in the action script documentation, and you can see the methods, the verbs, the things it can do, and the properties, the things it keeps track of. We're going to be using a bunch of those. So we also have got to load the actual sound file. That's the object that represents the file on the hard drive that is our sound. So our sound is an MP3, and it's called viv2.mp3. We're going to need that here in a second. All right. So our sound file, which we'll give the name sound file, the object type is URL request. And that's a good object that's used to load a number of different types of files, either on the local drive in the same folder as our movie, or out on the internet. We could put a full URL here. Okay, and we'll instantiate that as a URL request. Notice I'm getting some help here from Flash with the action script. And in here, we put the name of the file that we're loading. So in this case, it's going to be that viv2.mp3. So we're going to put that in here, just like that, viv2.mp3. So we have two objects, one of which represents the sound, one of which represents the actual file, which in this case is on our drive. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the sound file object and we're going to load it into the sound. The sound is called my music. We're going to use the load method and we're going to load sound file. We're kind of putting one object inside the other. So here's sound file. That's the reference to the file. Sound is the sound, so we've loaded it. The last thing we need to do to make it play is my music dot play. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and save. And we can preview. What you'll do is you'll go to the control menu. I know you can't see my control menu, but you'll go to the control menu and simply choose test movie and then test. And there is our movie. Let's go ahead and click play. And you may be able to hear the sound of Vivaldi. 
In the next videos, we're going to add a stop button, volume controls, and many other things to make our MP3 player a lot more robust.